Welcome to spring at the Santa Lucia Conservancy. I'm Kirsten and Julie and I made this video so that we could peek into the lives of some of our common birds that we see here at the Santa Lucia Conservancy Visitor Center. Well, birds are very different from us and what makes them unique? First thing that comes to mind when I think about birds is that they can fly. And what body parts do they have that allow them to fly? I would like to fly, but I don't have what they have. They have these incredible wings. So wings allow a bird to fly. They could not fly without wings. And a wing is an incredible thing. What are these things that are covering the wing? What are they made up of? Well, you probably know these are feathers. And there are different kinds of feathers. Birds are so highly specialized. So the longest feathers, the stiffest ones, the ones that get them off the ground and hold them up in the sky when they're soaring are their flight feathers. They're stiff and long, but they have many other feathers also. The ones that cover their whole body and give them their color and keep them warm are called their contour feathers. And then you've probably seen baby birds that are all fluffy. Those are their downy feathers and they fluff those up. It's like wearing a down coat and it gives them an air layer that keeps them warm when it's really cold. Scientists believe that feathers originally evolved on dinosaurs to keep them warm. And then small dinosaur species, which grew longer feathers, may have found them helpful in gliding. The oldest bird fossils found are 150 million years old. And the belief is that they evolved from a group of meat-eating dinosaurs called theropods. These were small dinosaurs, but they were related to Tyrannosaurus rex. So what else makes a bird unique? Do you hear the tree swallows flying behind me? Guess what? They are opening their beaks up as wide as they possibly can. They're like a flying net. Now this bird couldn't be any more different. So another unique thing about birds is that they have a beak. Where is their beak? Well, obviously it's where our mouth is. It is part of their mouth, but it is so specialized for collecting food. Birds live everywhere in the world. Can you imagine what this type of beak is for? Oh my gosh, look at that hook on the end. We'll talk about that more when you come. Okay, something else special about birds, we're heavy. Even if we had wings, we couldn't get off the ground. In order to be able to fly, birds have hollow bones. And I don't know if you can see, but even this beak, instead of being solid, there's like a crisscross of bone that gives it strength, but this weighs almost nothing. What an amazing thing that is. So a body part that we have, feet. Birds also have feet, but like their beaks, every kind of bird has a different kind of foot and it's specialized for what they eat and where they live. And we get hints of the fact that birds are living dinosaurs because on a bird, if you look carefully, they're covered in scales. And dinosaurs are reptiles and they were covered in scales. One of the things we're going to do is learn how to identify birds. They're not all the same. So what can we look for? The first thing is size. An eagle is bigger than a hummingbird. Another thing is shape. Even if you don't see the colors, you might see the shape. How about color? If you have a good look at it, that really helps the color of their feathers and where they are, that's habitat. So these are all ways of finding what kind of bird you see. You can hear birds. So they sing a different song, almost like their own language, and that's another way to tell what bird is what. Today we're going to look at a few of the birds that live in the meadow, some that live in a forest, and others that we might see along a stream or a river. So right now we're in our meadow, and we have these really special birds that come here. We see them about the first week of February every year. They're called tree swallows. We also have Western bluebirds here that reside in our bluebird boxes. Western bluebirds and tree swallows are called secondary cavity nesters. 
That means that they go into old woodpecker holes in the forest. So here in the meadow, when Julie and I first put up our boxes, we didn't know uh, if they would move in the first year, but we happened to do it just at the right time at the end of winter and we had birds the first year. Male birds are more brightly colored than the females and they search for nest sites together, although the female is the one that really builds the nest. They're made out of grasses and their eggs are a pale blue, sometimes white. First their eyes are closed and then they grow bigger and their parents feed them. Another bird that we see in the meadow are the tree swallows. Tree swallows make a grass nest on the bottom and then they collect feathers. They really love white feathers and they make a cup on top of their eggs that keep the eggs warm. So these nests are hidden inside holes and trees along the edges of meadows. And can you imagine what bird could make a nest small enough for me to hold it in my hand? Here, since you come and look at this really close up. What bird would make such a little tiny nest, Julie? Well, let's see. What is our tiniest bird? Because this is who it belongs to. Oh, any more clues? A long beak, sips nectar from flowers. Could it be a hummingbird? <laughs> Absolutely. The tiniest bird is very hard to see. The very top of this tree, there's a little tiny bird. That's a hummingbird. They, he's moving, which he or she, which makes it a little easier to see. So hummingbirds like to sit at the top of a branch, the top of the tree. Even though they're really tiny, they really protect their food source. It is so exciting to see a hummingbird. Their feathers are magnificent. The male is more brightly colored than the female, and our local resident here is the Anna's hummingbird. Everything about them is tiny. Their feathers, their nests, their eggs. They take spiderweb and soft plant material, and they weave it all together in their nest that is on a branch in a tree. They make a very camouflaged nest that looks like part of the tree and lay two eggs and have two little baby hummingbirds that they feed. We see hummingbirds buzzing around the meadow and in the forest and along the river. And in the open sky of the meadow, you can also get a good look at birds of prey. And what I like to do is look at color. Do I see a red tail? Yes, this is a red tailed hawk. Do I see a striped tail? Yes, this is a red shouldered hawk carrying nesting material to her nest. They often nest in the crown of trees, so we don't often get to see their nests. <laughs> in the forest along the Carmel River, there's a lot of brush and small trees and large trees and so many different kinds of plants and hiding places that it's harder to see birds. Do you see this bird? Can you hear it? It has a white chest with a black head and a rusty color side with white spots on its wings. It's the spotted towhee. They walk around on the ground. Their nests are on the ground. Their eggs are spotted. Spring is a time for baby birds and they are very well taken care of by their parents. Sometimes when you hear a bird, if you turn toward the sound, you'll find it. Tiny little yellow bird, really small. I hope you can look at this on something that you can see. The bright yellow bird. Did you see him put his head up and sing? He's making that really, really loud, 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 long song. He's called a Wilson's Warbler. He has a little black cap on his head. Birds just don't sit still. There's two of them in the tree right there. I doubt if you can see them, but you might see the tree shake. They're small. Oh, there's one hanging upside down. He's making those branch bounce around. They're looking for eggs and they're looking for bugs on the leaves. They eat all day long. 
And then Siki say chickadee, 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 dee, dee. Well, here's a bird that I heard before I saw. I don't know if you can see the movement. Listen to the sound. Kind of a quiet chirp, chirp. I see a blue head with a gray stripe. I don't know if you can see it. Look carefully, it's right in the middle of the picture. That is a scrub jay. And usually they make very loud noises. He's making very quiet noises. Kind of curious about what he's, he or she is. Oh, oh, it just jumped over to another bush. So now we can see it better. There's our scrub jay, sometimes called the policeman of the forest because they make a very loud caw caw sound that can warn all the creatures of the forest that there's danger. Did you notice when he jumped from one branch to another, there was a big poof of pollen. That's the pollen of the oak tree. Scrub jays are beautiful. They are vocal and assertive and inquisitive. They are very smart. Eggs are sort of a pale gray or green and spotted. And the females incubate them, but sometimes the males feed them as well. Omnivores. So they eat a wide variety of insects and spiders and snails. And in the winter, they eat the acorns they stored in the fall. And the carpenter of the forest, the acorn woodpecker, with its bright red head and its beautiful black and white body, its ability to hold on to a tree with its special feet and its unique beak for excavating holes for its nest sites and for acorns. They live in family groups, unlike any other woodpecker or other birds, and they cooperate together and they raise the offspring together. So whether it's a natural cavity in a tree where a branch fell off or a hole that a woodpecker excavated, other birds like migratory songbirds and owls will use those holes. Well, heading down to our river site, we get to see a lot of birds that live in the water, like these mallards, enjoying a beautiful spring morning. Mallards are large ducks with hefty bodies and rounded heads and wide, flat bills. The male and female look very different from each other. The male has a dark iridescent green head and the female is more camouflage and in flight their wings are broad and set back toward the rear of their body. We get to see them going to their nests. They nest on the ground near the water. They conceal their nests under the vegetation and they're just beautiful. Every year is a little bit different in the Carmel River and this year we're seeing the common merganser. So they are um, a large, long-bodied duck with thin pointed wings. Their bills are straight and narrow, unlike the wide, flat bill of a typical duck. The adult male is very different looking than the female with an iridescent green head for most of the year and a red bill. They live in fresh water and they nest in tree cavities along these rivers and lakes and they dive down under the water and eat fish and their chicks when they leave the nest in the summer the female will stay with them as they grow up while the males will gather in flocks and in winters the mergansers form large flocks on inland reservoirs and rivers The great blue heron will often stand motionless. We see this bird in our meadows and down by the river. You can also see them down by the ocean. It's quite a sight to see one because of their incredible size. Even though they're very tall, they only weigh five to six pounds thanks to their hollow bones. 
They have specialized feathers on their chest that continually grow and fray. And they can quickly strike prey at a distance thanks to their specially shaped neck vertebrae. They make nests in trees near water. Their eggs are pale blue and look at these babies. They almost look like little dinosaurs. Thanks for coming with us on this virtual bird walk. When you come with your class on the live Zoom, we're gonna play some bird games. And we're going to visit a couple different habitats and see what bird activity we can find. See you soon. Bye.